Today we're going to take the equations of motion that we developed last time and the idea of our state vector and use it to develop the linearized equations of motion for aircraft and start looking at the fixed stick response of an aircraft as well as the simplifications that can be made due to symmetry. So let's start with the process of linearizing the equations of motion. From the kinematic and dynamic equations, we were able to see that each variable in the state vector, T, was governed by an ODE, an ordinary differential equation. So we have 12 ordinary differential equations which govern our system. Six kinematic equations. So X E, Y E, Z E, and the Euler angles. And six dynamic equations. Y, Z, N. So now, while last time we had compact vector equations that were, uh, matrix equations that were a little difficult to see into, um, let's now write each equation out in full. So the x position. And velocity component and these terms involving the lower angles come directly from the transformation they perceive. For y e, they're simply similar. Fine. Time for that. Sin psi plus cos phi cos phi e plus cos phi phi theta sin psi minus sin phi cos And of course, we can do the same for z dot e, where we just get minus sine theta u plus sine phi cos theta t plus cos phi cos theta w. For the Euler angles, using our scalar quantity notation that we developed last time, we can write this as T plus Q times phi and theta plus R plus phi and theta. And Theta dot is T plus phi minus R times phi. Phi dot is T 
to sine phi over cos theta plus r cos phi over cos theta. For the dynamic equations, starting with the x linear momentum and remembering that the force is an aerodynamic force, so that we separate out the weight. Y Z. And this is W dot twelve B times V minus U times U. So that's nine out of twelve done. Now let's write out the angular momentum equations for L by effect. We got SIXY, two dot, SIXZ, R dot, plus I ZZ minus IYY, times two times R, plus IYZ, times q squared minus r squared plus i x z q minus i x y the r plus h z or h is the uh, onboard angular momentum minus h y r the Y moment equation gives us I X Y Z dot plus I Y Y Z dot plus I Y Z R dot plus I X X minus I Z Z R T plus I X Z R squared minus Q squared plus I X Y Q R minus I Y Z Q Q plus H X R minus H Z T and finally then for Z moment we get I X Z P dot plus I Y Z Q dot plus I Z Z R dot plus Z, Z minus I X X Q Q plus I X Y Q squared minus Q squared plus I Y Z times R times P minus I X Z R Q Y times P minus HX times Q. 
So the reason that it's useful to write these out in full is it allows us to think about grouping the equations together in different ways. So specifically what we're now going to do is multiply each of the linear momentum equations, so the ones for x, y, and z, by 1 over m. And the angular momentum equations for L, M, N by the inverse of the inertia tensor. And this will give us explicit equations for the things we're actually looking for. Which are u dot, v dot, w dot, p dot, v dot, and r dot. Now, it's fairly easy to see from looking at these equations that that'll be the case. Dividing through these equations by m will allow us to re rearrange these equations as u dot equals, v dot equals, w dot equals, but it's maybe a little bit less obvious that the uh, intended effect will occur for these equations. Nevertheless, um, it does work if you feel like working it out on your own to convince yourself, I encourage you to do so. So after we do that, then all 12 plate equations will have the classical form of a state space evolution. And we can write that the state space, or the state vector, x, or the time derivative of the space vector x is some function, vector function of the state vector itself and the control inputs. Remember that these control inputs come in since the controls affect the aerodynamic forces and moments.